Hey everyone, expect to hear a whole lot more stories than just this one. This is just scratching the surface. Headline, CBC News, Nova Scotia. Rise in fast burning house fires heats up calls for sprinklers in homes. I think the concept that the fire department will come and save you all the time is a myth. <laughs> it shows a house just, yeah, it looks like someone just threw a match in a gas-fueled pile of tinder. Burned out homes and distraught families are often all that's left in the wake of a new breed of house fire that feeds of flammable furniture and open concept designs. Those fires which chew through homes with frightening speed are prompting firefighters and fire prevention groups in Canada to push for the installation of sprinkler systems in new homes across the country. Fires today move very quickly. They are to be taken seriously. I think the concept that the fire department will come and save you all the time is a myth, says Vince McKenzie, a director with the Canadian Association of Fire Chiefs. The association is advocating of a wider use of residential sprinkler system and wants the National Building Code of Canada, which sets out technical provisions for the design and construct of new homes to reflect that. But I mean, <laughs> I'll post a link to this article in the description below, but I just wanted to read that little bit to give you a, at least, you know, uh, somewhat understand what they're trying to put forward to present. And let me just tell you, as someone that's worked in the new home construction industry for many years now, if you knew what these homes were actually built from, you know, back in the day, like homes like mine, like mine's a 100-year home, that I, the home that I have back in New Brunswick, it's built of real raw materials like hardwoods and softwoods, you know, and it's actual the raw material. Like if you took a tree and you cut it and you actually cut boards out of it, that's the material that, my home is comprised of. All the homes today, the bulk, the majority of the material used in your home today, I gotta tell you folks, it's made of what they call value added or repurposed material. So sawdust, glue, wood shavings, wood chips, and they all, all the plywood nowadays, it's not even plywood. Well, there's still some, but they use real thin stuff now. So your roofing that you see, yeah, they still use plywood, but very, very thin sheets, like quarter inch, three eighths thick. But the rest of your house, like all the surrounding uh, sheets of material that comprise the rest of your house, house, that's made of aspenite or chipboard, as some people call it. But it's basically just wood chips, right? Old wood chips that would have normally, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago would have been, you know, used as hog fuel, which is just another expression for wood kilns, but, or, you know, thrown to the curb or in the garbage or disposed of accordingly nowadays though that's that's what comprises your house even all that trim that you see all around your baseboards you know and all that trim around your doors the overwhelming majority of you people you might think that that's actually made of wood but no it's actually that stuff's made of wood sawdust with glue it's basically just sawdust glue and some white paint over top of it and it's shaped to look like real wood but it's not, it's just sawdust glued together. So yeah, if you get a fire in your home nowadays, like I say, with all these value added materials, as they call it, with all these repurposed, recycled materials that your home is comprised of, oh yeah, if you get a fire today, yeah, you better have lots of smoke alarms and you know, CO detect, all, have as many means and tools at your disposal to give you a real quick alarm or warning if anything's going on in your head as far as fire because yeah you start the clock and it's a pretty short time frame you're gonna have you better get the fuck out of dodge or you're gonna burn up real quick and it's a shame because if you look at the price that people have to pay for these homes like what you're paying upwards of a million dollars for a bunch of repurposed and recycled materials wow you people are insane i mean just forget about that stuff because that goes into the old whole housing market i'm not even dealing with that but now the fact that they're trying to say what you need sprinkler system so i guess that creates more bureaucratic levels for government right where you'll have to have everybody come around and inspect your home for sprinkler systems and i guess it probably helped people that are in the sprinkler system sales business but you shouldn't have to paint over a mask over the fact that your house is basically like a a big giant box of tinder that's dried out and just waiting for even the slightest spark to turn your dream house into a pile of ashes in a very short time frame. But hey, listen, a lot of people are still willing to keep going along, get along because you know they at least 
paint the houses and put enough amenities inside, it gives the facade that it's, look at how nice it is. It looks nice though, right? It looks nice. You can bring your neighbors over or your family or friends and say, look at how beautiful my home is. Although it's like, oh, oh don't touch nothing. Your finger might go through here or <laughs> But at least you got the facade, right? Right? At least the facade's there. At least you could put on a good face, a good pretense that you, your money was well spent. The next 25 to 40 years of your life that represents a substantial portion of your productive income. I guess you got to tell yourself whatever you got to tell yourself to keep going along and get along for, for that two and a half to four decades of work that you're going to, that's going to be required to pay off that house that's made out of repurposed and recycled materials for the most part. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Skinny Libertarian. And I love liberty.